For decades, the Great Barrier Reef has enjoyed world heritage status. Its unique underwater landscape has been synonymous with diving, tourism and with Australia. But in June of this year, UNESCO issued a warning to the Australian government threatening to downgrade the Great Barrier Reef to the World Heritage in Danger list. I travelled out to the reef with conservation organisation WWF to meet people living and working along the coast and to find out what was happening. Railway 108, Alpha 5, traffic So we're taking off um, from Rockhampton and running alongside the Fitzroy River. This delta is one of the largest and last untouched estuarine systems feeding into the Great Barrier Reef. This is what we're really fighting to protect. But we can see in the distance there Gladstone Harbour and the industrial development and the destruction of the World Heritage listed uh, Curtis Island. There were dead turtles washing up on the beaches, the um, Indo-Pacific humpback dolphins disappeared completely from the area and it basically destroyed the fishing industry in the Gladstone area when that happened. I can already tell you I came here in 2009 and the effects that I've seen from 2009 until 2014 are immense and to see such a change in my lifetime should be unheard of. It's one thing to go to your local aquarium and see all of these species behind glass and admire their beauty, but to get into their ecosystem and their environment and experience the connection that you can have with another species, you can't emulate that. And to know that I can't have that in maybe 25 years, it's not something or a world that I wanna live in. In the next 25 years, we'll see another 16,000 coal seam gas mines. And I just don't see why we would practice such a detrimental industry on such a well-loved ecosystem. I don't understand it. <laughs> It's not easy to put a price on the reef. When I asked people how much the beauty of the reef was worth, I got two answers. One was priceless, the other was about six billion per annum. Tourism is still one of the largest employers in Queensland, providing over 70,000 jobs. Now as a tour operator, we work very hard to protect the reef. It is our backyard, it's our business, so naturally we take a lot of care in it. In fact, the government makes sure we work very hard because we pay an environmental management charge. And for every person that visits the reef, a portion of our income goes back to help pay for the management of the Great Barrier Reef. When you look at the dredging of the coal ports, they're allowed to use the reef, dump their dredge spoils out there, paying no tax whatsoever, paying nothing whatsoever. And because of the coal port expansion, we face the real possibility of losing our World Heritage listing. It'll become endangered. And that kind of effect on tourism can only be bad. The Barrier Reef is unique in that most of the threats facing it come in the form of onshore industry. Before the recent drive to expand coal ports, the main industry in the firing line was farming. Rainfall inland starts in the mountains, crosses agricultural land picking up pesticides and fertilizers, and then carries it down the rivers and out onto the reef. But farming practices are starting to change. I met up with Jerry Deguara, a sugarcane farmer from Mackay, taking part in Project Catalyst, a partnership bringing together farmers, the Coca-Cola Foundation, government agencies and WWF, to find ways to reduce his impact on the reef without compromising the productivity of his business. People need to be shown ways to improve what goes on. That's the main thing, I think. So far, everything we've, we've done to improve the water quality has been a bonus in the fact that it's probably the best economically to do it. 
and um, you know we've gone to a controlled traffic, um, applying the nutrients in the right position in the in the fields, moving more towards variable rate, not over fertilising at areas that don't need it. Nothing has cost us a lot more money. It's been a great help with the capital expenditure, and so far it seems like it's working. The situation here on the Great Barrier Reef reflects the findings of WWF's newly released Living Planet report. Jerry and the Great Barrier Reef are just one example of how better choices can be good for business and the environment. If worked sustainably, the Great Barrier Reef could continue to generate revenue in farming, fishing, tourism, renewables and other industries that rely on its beauty and its natural capital. But if our ecological and financial decisions remain unaligned, everyone stands to lose. And what's at stake is more than just world heritage status.